Hi, this is JP from No The Lights Over Arkham. Welcome to another Unexpected Courage video. And this is the video series where I make a limited carpool deck uh, for an investigator uh, using only uh, two core sets and the uh, campaign cycle we are featuring. And this time it will be the Feast of Hemlock Vale campaign. So we have built a deck for the Feast of Hemlock campaign using only two core boxes and or a revised core set or, and the Feast of Hemlock Vale Investigator expansion. So uh, without further delay, I'll quickly uh, tell what I'm going to do in this video. So we will be looking at the deck I've built, then we'll play the prelude because uh, the Feast of Hemlock Vale has this prelude mechanic which will uh, uh, replace the mulligan for the day scenarios and we will be playing the first day scenario with the deck to showcase how it works. Uh, we might lose the scenario or we might win but either way uh, I'll wa I want to give a good example of a deck you can build uh, with uh, the core set cards and the Feast of Hem Hemlock cards and not use any other cards from the other expansion cycles. So uh, first off let's hop over to ArkhamCDB.com and look about the Alessandra um, Sorosi deck I've built. Okay and we are over on ArkhamCDB.com and here is my Alessandra Sorosi Unexpected Courage deck. So uh, with only cards from the core set and the Feast of Hemlock Vale, uh, I decided to go with the Rogue from this set. And uh, first off we have something to fight with in, in the British Bulldog. So this ha uh, is a really good card for Alessandra. Uh, it synergizes with her ability to have uh, extra parlay actions and also you can fight with your agility which Alessandra has uh, a good amount. Then we have fake credentials, so same thing, you can do a free parlay if there's an enemy and utilize the fake credentials and do some investigating with that. Then. Of course, from the course that we have flashlight. This is a really staple when you are working with a limited card pool, uh, especially in true solo. Flashlight can carry you through a scenario easily, or um, at least part of it. Then uh, we have Eldritch Tongue because we don't have every parlay event possible. We want to recycle some of them during a scenario, so Eldritch tongue will let us play uh, parlay cards from our discard which is really powerful. Uh, then uh, we'll go through the basic weakness I rolled for this character. So we are only working with uh, Hemlock Vale weak basic weaknesses and the Corset basic weaknesses and we hit the back injury. This isn't that crucial. Uh, it's only minus one health so it shouldn't be a really big problem and we are we don't even have a um, body slot item so that's okay it doesn't bump our uh, for example fine clothes because we don't have access to those because they come in the Dunwich legacy cycle so we don't have uh, fine clothes which is a basic uh, really good card for Alessandra in other cases then for our ally, we are using the new ally Bianca Dia Cuts. It is a really good uh, economy resource card um, because of the parlay. Again, synergizes well with Alessandra. Then two copies of Mo Fox Masks. Uh, the masks in uh, the Hemlock Vale are really powerful. They have become really strong staple cards for most of my deck builds lately. And uh, with the Fox Mask, it's really good for Alessandra with the plus two to intellect and plus two to agility it can provide. So that is a really good card for Alessandra. Then for some damage dealing, we have backstabs from the core set. Again, this use your agility, so that is good. Then we have Beguiles, which are of course uh, Alessandra's own uh, signature cards. And uh, for economy we have Grift, this is again a parlay action and uh, 
because Alessandro can make a free parlay action each round, you really want to try to utilize the parlay actions the most you can. A stall for time is a bit interesting. It is, of course, a willpower test, but you could boost your willpower with some events to hit that mark and it will help you to maybe have some ways to uh, not deal with an enemy if you don't have a weapon ready to stall for time. Then we have Steer the Pot, which is a parlay uh, fight event. Really, really interesting, a, a bit swingy, maybe better in multiplayer, but I want to try it out. Uh, then we have Vamp. Uh, Vamp is um, interesting. It's uh, maybe not the best on level zero, but the level three version is really, really powerful with Alessandro. Uh, then uh, we have a staple of uh, skill cards. We have Guts, uh, one copy of Life light-footed. This could be really good in some situations. Uh, max, uh, manual dexterity for the uh, agility boost and uh, perception for investigating. Unexpected courage to round out in any kinks you might have when uh, doing a skill test. And well-dressed, uh, really good for the parlay actions because it's basically four wilds for a parlay action. So. Uh, it it re works really well in Alessandra's builds. Then, uh, of course, we have the Sama Kona, which is the signature weakness of Alessandra. So that is the deck, and we'll see how that works. So let's hop back over to the scenario. Okay, so that was the deck, and uh, we will be playing the prelude. This is because I want to simulate the Hemlock Vale campaign as a whole uh, for the first scenario. So we will do the um, uh, prelude before the day one scenario. And uh, I, I have already decided I am going to follow uh, the expedition leader, so to speak, to the, the thing in the depth scenario. So you will, if, uh, you will know what scenario I will be playing for the first day scenario to demonstrate the deck. But without further delay, let's get started. Okay, and we are ready to start. Uh, we start with one uh, doom on the agenda. And I will not be reading any of the flavor text. I will just look what will happen if I uh, manage to parlay someone. Uh, we are starting from the crossroads. Uh, we will give one last shuffle to our deck and draw our opening hand, and there is no uh, really, <laughs> really big strategy to this. We'll just run around the Hemlock Vale and see what we find. So one, two, three, four, five. And we have the Guile, Eldritch Tongue, Unexpected Courage. We redraw some corner. And this is basically a decent hand to start with. I don't think I need that. I don't think I need that, so I will do... Okay, that is the, I think, the best starting hand we can manage. So uh, we are able to play one asset into play, get one clue and go from there. I won't be playing the weapon, there's no use for that in the prelude and not at the start of the scenario. So the most important thing I think is to play the flashlight for my first action. This is because the charges on the flashlight will regenerate and uh, we want to hit the ground running for our investigations. So uh, first thing first, I will do the Parlay uh, or the action here also. So uh, we will read the codex entry 10, but I'll just look what happens. So uh, codex entry 10, you may either draw one card or gain one resource. So as we lost two resources, I'll gain a resource. 
Uh, we will start the scenario with uh, the cards in our hand up to our hand size, the resources we have up to our starting resources and the one event and uh, or one um, asset in play which won't start in play usually and uh, all the clues we can gather and there's only one clue on the table so we'll just go grab that and we find the Theo Peters and put him into play at the crossroads so we have Theo Peters here and um, I'm actually using this to mark Alessandra's free parlay. So um, we will use the free parlay, discard a card from our hand. It will be the unexpected courage. We don't need that. And uh, we will parlay with Theo Peters. So that will be parlay or the codex entry eight. So you may immediately move to, a, to any location, increase Theo Peters relationship level, okay. We'll move over here for our last action. We will uh, do an investigate here using the flashlight. Why not? And uh, just to mind, uh, the auto fail is not in the bag before we go into the first day scenario. Uh, and uh, we uh, decided to pick the um, Intro, intro selection that adds one tablet to the back. We'll go with that. So uh, we are investigating four against zero. It is a minus three, so we'll just grab this clue. And that is our first turn. So uh, again, there's no encounter decks, but so we don't draw any encounter cards in this. So uh, we will just uh, go through this preload really fast. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, we add a Doom, no encounter card. So, uh, oh yeah, after you discover a clue at the old mill, we should have read the codex entry 12. So uh, again, we can either throw one card or gain one resource. And we put Leah Atwood into play. So we'll add Leah Atwood here. And uh, we forgot to do our upkeep, so we drew a fake credentials and gained a resource. And then we drew another card, which is a backstab for the effect here. Okay, so uh, we'll do the free parlay action here with Alessandra. So test. Uh, Combat 2, if you succeed, uh, we'll get uh, Codex Entry 2. So I'm committing the backstab to the test. Uh, we are testing 3 versus 2. I could actually take a risk here, but I, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not that keen on uh, even talking to her. Okay, uh, minus two, we fail. Uh, okay, I think I'll give another shot here. Uh, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll give another shot for the par uh, parlay. So two versus two, minus three. Yeah, let's forget about it. Uh, we'll just move up here and uh, we will uh, approach the old homestead and we read the uh, codex entry 13. So at Wood House, you may either draw one card or gain one resource. We need more cards. We get uh, stir the pot. And we search for Simeon Atwood and put him into play at Atwood House asset side face up. Okay. And that is that round. We draw our weakness, which gets discarded and gain a resource. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add another do. Okay, first action, we'll do the free parlay. And uh, we are testing four versus two for Simeon Atwood. It is a minus two, we succeed. 
and uh, Simeon Atwood is correct entry 3. So uh, search the top 9 cards of your deck for a tactic or trick card and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck, increase Simeon Atwood's relationship level. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do we have any tactics or trick cards? Uh, we have Grift and we have Stall for Time. We have Light Fooded. Okay, I'll, I'll grab the Grift. At least it has good symbols on it. And we shuffle our deck and we increase Simeon Atwood's relationship level. Uh, next thing, uh, we'll go to Hemlock Chapel and we do the action here to read Codex Entry 11. And Codex Entry 11, uh, you may either draw one card or gain a resource. I'll draw a card, we get manual dexterity. Uh, set, uh, let's see. Uh, Mother Rachel, and uh, she comes into play at the chapel. Okay, and uh, we have willpower icons, so we could try that out. We only have one, uh, we have two. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll commit these two to a parlay test. There are four versus two. Uh, skull is access to current day number, so minus one. Uh, we succeed, so we read codex entry number one. You may play a charm or spell asset from your hand, ignoring its cost. Okay. Didn't do anything. We don't have a charm or... Uh, actually we have, but we don't want to play it because uh, we only can ha carry on one asset. Okay, so that is our turn. We draw Beguile, gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We are at 4 of 6 Doom, no encounter card again. Uh, first action we'll move here and do the free action here to move to Tad's general store. And we'll do a free parlay here to haggle for goods. Reading resolution 14. And uh, you may spend more resources to search your deck for an item. We don't do that. So just, uh, set aside residence encounter set for Judith Park and put her into play at Tad's general store. So Judith Park is here, and we'll parlay, spend uh, one resource to parlay. And Judith is uh, codex entry 7. So you may play a weapon a, a card from your hand, ignoring its cost, and increase Judith Park's relationship level. Uh, we are not playing anything. And last action, we'll move to the commons. That is our turn. We'll draw a card. Back injury gets discarded and we'll gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We are doom. So this will be the last round. We have time to run around Hemlock Vale. And uh, yeah, let's just start by doing the action here. Uh, so you inspect the commons hall and check out the local delivery service and codex entry 16. Uh, we can search for an ally asset and put it into your hand. I don't think we need to do that. We could do that. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, we don't find our only ally. Then uh, we find Gideon Misra. Let's 
spawn him at the commons and I'll just do a double action to parlay. Uh, parlay with Gideon. Gideon is um, par uh, codex entry 6. Uh, draw three cards, increase Gideon Mistress relationship level. One, two, three. Okay. And uh, last action is uh, we'll just move back to the crossroads. That is everything. No point in advancing to the next round. We just uh, draw a card and gain a resource. Then uh, we will go to the next round and add the sixth doom here, which will advance. So uh, it's investigator resigns resolution one. And resolution one is uh, make preparation for your first survey. Choose one asset in your play area to keep. We'll keep the flashlight. And discard down to your opening hand size, so it is five cards. We will definitely keep Fox Max, British Bulldog, and uh, one Big Oil, Manual Dexterity. One, two, three, four. We can still keep one more card. Mm, I think Grift could be a good one. And we drop down to our starting resources and we keep the one clue we got. And yeah, that is the prelude. Uh, we'll set up the uh, first scenario, which is the thing in the depths, and we'll continue from there. So I'll be right back. Okay, and we are set up on the thing in the depth scenario with Alessandra. Uh, we are starting from here. Uh, in the setup, we put Judith Park into play at this location, and we start the game with Dr. Rosa Marquez in our um, control, and she doesn't take up an ally slot. Uh, she's a really good story asset ally for Alessandra because she boosts. Uh, our intellect and agility, which are ma our two main main um, traits or skill skill traits. So we'll just quickly go through the agenda and act cards. So agenda, uh, light tremors uh, ripple through the floating landscape. The bog is found, jungle of bright flowers and glassy oily reflections. Action resign you flee the bog forced when you your turn ends if you are at the bog location place one damage on your location as a scene call choosing calls instead if there is one or two investigators in the game forced if a location has three or more scene calls on it remove all scene calls from it and flip it over and doom threshold is three so we need to be fast and uh, botanical survey. This bog is supposedly the origin of the sample that drew Dr. Marcus to the island in the first place. You have your work cut out for you. Objective at the end of the round, investigators at the North Shore location may spend the requisite number of clues as a group to advance. And uh, we need three clues. And the location that has Judith Park is the North Shore location, which we need to go to spend our clues. So uh, we have our opening hand and the flashlight in play and five resources and one clue. So we basically need two more clues for us to be able to advance. So uh, first action, I will play the Fox Mask. And it has two charges on it. Then, um, might as well investigate here, five versus three. I'm not uh, using any other cards for this. And there's a force, I believe, at the Rotten Dock. After you discover one or more clues at the Rotten Dock, uh, test Agility 3 if you fail. Place one damage on Rotten Deck as a sinkhole. It doesn't matter, we are leaving this location. 
5 versus 3. Minus 3. Uh, I mean 5 versus 2, so we succeed. And uh, we'll test the agility. So 4 versus, I mean 5 versus 3 again. Or yeah, 5 versus 3. Uh, minus 2, so we pass that. Last action, we will go over here and we'll end our turn there. So we'll do an upkeep and of course we drew our basic weakness right away and we'll add two sinkholes here. So not a very good start. We immediately got our uh, we basic weak or uh, signature weakness summon koa so elusive spawn nearest empty location if able alessandra sorsi cannot parlay with summon kona forced the first time alessandra sorsi parlays each round place one doom on summon kona okay so we'll need to get rid of that guy fast Okay, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom. The first encounter card is Call of the Wild, test agility 3. If you fail, choose the nearest enemy. That enemy attacks you. If you failed and no enemy was chosen, take two damage instead. So I'm actually wanting to fail this because with the elusive, the summon color will run away, which we would want at this situation so four versus three uh, I mean five versus three so not probably gonna fail this it is an elder sign uh, if you succeed choose a non-elite enemy at your location or a reveal connecting location automatically evade that enemy well that helped really nice okay and we passed that and uh, yeah, now uh, we will just kill that guy. I'll play the British Bulldog with three resources. And uh, we need some bullets on it. Mm, we will be shooting. I'll commit the manual dexterity to the, the attack. Oh yeah, we should have read uh, Codex Entry for discovering clue with uh, Rosa Marquez. So yeah, it doesn't do anything at the start of the scenario. We could have removed all the sinkholes or flip a sunken location over, but there were none when this was uh, done. So, uh, yeah, we could actually just investigate here for our last action and remove the sinkholes from here. So, I think that's a good idea. And we'll finish off Samakoa next round. So, we are shooting uh, 5, 6, 7 versus 3 with the British Bulldog. Minus two, we deal two damage to summon Koa. And last action, we will investigate here and I will try to guarantee that we get this last clue to remove the sinkholes here. Uh, we are five against zero. And it is zero, we'll grab this clue. And the location gets plus one shroud for each sinkhole on it. Oh yeah, okay, so it was uh, uh, 5 versus 2, not 5 versus 0, but either way we managed it. No enemy actions, we'll go to upkeep, Samanko readies, and engages us. Oh yeah, we drew a card with the manual dexterity, which is stall for time. Then we drew a card, perception, again a resource, so... That is that round. Oh yeah, we add new sinkholes here. And let's go to the next round. We add a Doom. 
This should be a doom matter resource. And encounter card is ground disturbance test. Will power or agility four. For each point you fail by, you must either take one damage or place one damage on the nearest poke location as a sinkhole. Um, I think I'll use the perception here and I'll go seven versus four. Minus one, uh, we pass. We'll draw a card from the perception. It is backstab. Could just really use that on the last round. Okay, first action, we'll use the British Bulldog. We forgot to take one ammo out of it last round to fire at Summon Koa. And uh, I'm, I don't think I need that many resources this game, so I'll commit the Grift for this test. Uh, we are 6 versus 3. No. I'll actually use one uh, charge from the Fox Max Go 7 versus 3, so we dodge the minus 4. Minus 2. We defeat Summon Koa. And uh, we'll move over here. Because it's a victory point location. <clears throat> or do we want to try and get this? I think we don't have time. And uh, yeah, we'll move over here as our last action. Uh, we'll go to upkeep, we draw guts and gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom so the agenda advances. So flip the center location to its sunken side, discard all tokens and player cards attachments. Uh, spawn the set aside thing in the depths enemy at it. So let's see. Yeah, the clues go away. So that is actually a victory point uh, as I understand. I have to actually check that because uh, it would be silly just to get a free... Okay, so keeping all investigators enemies attached to treacheries and clues on that location. Okay, that makes sense. So we'll put those um, those back here. Oh yeah, and we forgot to put the damage tokens on this location. Okay. Was it two? Yeah. And um, because this uh, okay, we, we get this the thing in the depths enemy. So four fight, uh, 15 health and two evade, abomination, flora, mucheda, delete, elusive hunter, massive retaliate. During uh, uh, it cannot make attacks of opportunity. While the thing in the depths is moving, its location is considered to be connected to each sunken location. Forced after the thing in the depths attacks at the bog location, heal two damage from it. And two victory points. Okay, then we will read uh, Agenda 2A. The thing in the bog. The bog rocks with towering waves. Force when your turn begins, if you are at the bog location, place one damage on your location as a sinkhole. Two sinkholes instead if there are one or two investigators in the game. Forced. If a location has three or more sinkholes on it, remove all sinkholes from it and flip it over. Objective if the thing in the depths is defeated. Resolution 4. Then Doom Threshold. And we get an encounter card, which is Sinking Sludge. Uh, if you are at a sunken location, take one direct damage and deal one direct damage to each ally asset you control. Or bulk location, place one damage on your location as a sinkhole. So basically this location gets flipped over. 
Okay. And that is that. So we'll go to uh, we'll go to our turn. So first action, we will try to investigate this location. I'll use the flashlight to lower the shroud to uh, three, and I'm committing grift to the test. And uh, <clears throat> uh, we are testing six versus three. I just want to get the victory point from this location. Minus one. We'll grab this clue. Uh, we'll move over here. And uh, we... Uh, let's check. Can we advance at the end of the round or uh, at the end of the round? So we'll just might as well try to get this uh, one clue from here. So I'm using the flashlight again. And uh, we are... Five versus two. Uh, it is a plus one. I think I don't need to parlay with Judith Park this time. We could, maybe next round, but we'll see. Uh, oh yeah, we have the free parlay, so why not? So uh, we'll <coughs> spend one resource to parlay with Judith Park. Silly of me to forget that I have a free parlay action every round. So Judith Park, uh, uh, take control of Judith Park. Okay, well, an extra body to have, which is nice. And uh, while you control Judith Park, you may take an additional action during a turn, which can only be used to fight. So we have a free fight and a free parlay each round. That's really nice. Enemy face, this enemy hunts over here, upkeep. We get uh, light footed and gain a resource and we'll spend three clues to advance. So we advance. Uh, spawn the set aside uh, Sheludran hybrid enemy at the North Shore location. Choose a location adjacent to Sheludran hybrid location and spawn one of the set aside grasping tendril enemies at that location. Shuffle each other set aside grasping tendril enemy into the encounter deck along with the discard pile. Okay, dokie. So we spawn one and I might as well spawn it to this location. We get this enemy here, and we shuffle the discard pile and the rest of these tendrils into the encounter deck. So, uh, I'll shuffle this better later. Okay, <clears throat> so the grasping tendril is a two fight, X health, two, four evade, abomination, floor um search uh, at night, uh, aloof. And spawn Salutrian hybrid location and X is the current day number. So, well, this spawns here, and uh, then we have the Salutrian hybrid is a two fight, five health, two evade creature flora mutated elite, aloof, elusive patrol nearest empty location. Salutrian hybrid cannot move if. A ready abomination enemies at its location or if it is uh, engaged with an investigator forced if it, this enemy is defeated resolution 3 and what do we need to do is um, discovery of a lifetime the large flowering turtle like creature is on the move perhaps you can herd it to safety fast trigger the ability investigators at a single location adjacent to the Shaludrian hybrid's location, spend one clue per investigator as a group for the remainder of the round. Change uh, Shaludrian hybrid's patrol location to that location forced at the end of the enemy phase. Shaludrian hybrid takes one damage for each ready abomination enemy at its location. Objective at the end of the round, if the Shaludrian hybrid is at the starting location, immediately advance. And this was our starting location. And lastly, we'll add two sinkholes here. Okay, so I think that's everything. So we can try to kite this Ceridian hybrid over here to the finish line. So that is that round. 
let's go to the next round. We add a do and count the chord is in our uh, innervation uh, test combat five reduce the difficulty of this test for by one for each damage on you if you fail you must either take two damage or choose the card with the highest printed cost in your hand and discard it we are just testing it and taking the damage probably uh, two versus five not committing anything it is a minus one we fail we'll take the two damage that is basically a good, good result. Uh, first action, we will try to investigate. And I'm, I'm using the fox, fox mask. And uh, uh, we are at 5, 6, 7 versus 4. I'll go 8 versus 4. It is a skull, it is minus one, we succeed, we get this clue, we'll move over here, we spend one clue as a fast trigger ability to make this move here in the enemy phase, and we'll keep on moving over here. Enemy phase, this moves here, uh, this moves over here, and We'll go to upkeep, we draw perception and gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Uh, one thing I did uh, forget is that Fox Mask, if you move out of a location with an enemy, it gains one of its charges back. And we just moved uh, out of the location with an enemy. So we should have one here. Uh, we'll add a Doom and count the card for this round is. Uh, poison blue, uh, poison blossom. Uh, let's see. Day poison blossom gets plus one health and plus one damage value for each overgrowth on it. Forced at the end of the round, place one resource on poison blossom as overgrowth. Okay, so this spawns on us. We'll do a parlay. Uh, fa uh, first thing we'll do is play uh, this Beguile on it. We're basically going to parlay and make it move away from us. So uh, we'll do the parlay. This enemy moves over here. And we forgot to add these to the location as sinkholes last round. Okay. I'm just checking, does this make the enemy Exhaust. No, it doesn't. Okay. So it moved here. Uh, that was our first free parlay action. We'll move here. It engages us again. Uh, we'll do another parlay action and move it over here. So now it's uh, off of our way. A last action. Uh, yeah, before that, I will use one clue to make this parlay towards this and uh, last action will move here that is our turn enemy face this enemy hunt uh, moves now here this moves here and that is everything upkeep uh, we draw manual dexterity and gain a resource so that is that round let's go to the next round we add a doom and count the card is Hazard uh, Swarm. Hazard test uh, agility tree for each point you fail by. You must either lose one resource or take one damage. We'll just use the manual dexterity here. Uh, we are testing seven versus three, minus two. We'll draw a card. It is guts. 
Okay, and... Uh, oh yeah, uh, I think I used a clue here, but I could have used it here last round for this guy. And now I noticed that I actually need to be at the connecting location to use that clue. So mm, this round will be... Oh yeah, we didn't place the damage over here again. Uh, we'll move here. We'll spend the clue to make this guy move over here. Uh, we'll go... Uh, we'll go to this location. And uh, we'll do the free parlay to move this guy over here. And we'll investigate here. And I'm committing uh, perception using the fox man. No, I'll just use the perception. So seven versus five. I'll use the. Yeah. Seven versus five. Uh, minus one will grab a clue. Uh, enemy face, this moves here. This actually moves here, engages us, hits us for two damage and two horror, and goes elusive away from us. Oh yeah, we drew a card. Okay, so two damage. We'll put this like so, and two horror. And uh, upkeep. Yeah, so next round we can get this guy move here because uh, it moves to the empty location, so that is empty. So yeah, that is that round. Hopefully next round we'll get to the last round. We add a doom. Encounter card is... Uh, unnatural growth. Place one Doom on the nearest enemy with no Doom on it. If no Doom was placed, discard two cards at random from your hand. We'll just place one Doom on this guy. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah, this guy has like uh, three resources on it as overgrowth. We don't really care. Okay. So, uh, this should be ready. So this round we are just getting this clue moving away and letting this move here. And that is the end of the scenario. So, first action we'll use the fox mask to investigate 7 versus 5. I'll commit the stir the pot, 8 versus 5. It is a zero. We'll get this last clue. And uh, oh yeah, this is a sink, sunk location. So oh yeah, we should have drawn the top card of the encounter deck at some point. So I'll draw it now. So uh, we haven't played a card in many rounds, so this wouldn't have mattered. Okay, so uh, we succeeded get, getting the clue. Uh, we'll move over here and we'll just play Eldritch Tongue just for the kick of it. And that is our turn. Enemy face, this enemy moves over here, this hunts over here. And that is everything. So we'll go to upkeep, we draw a vamp and get a resource. And uh, at the end of the round, if the uh, Seludrian hybrid is at the starting location, immediately advance. Uh, so... We go to resolution 2, Strange Anatomy. 
and in resolution 2 uh, we note that in the camera log that the Salutrian hybrid lived each investigator earns three bonus experience as they witness a part of the East Wick box unique flora and fauna so we have uh, one, two, three, six experience out of this scenario and uh, resolution five we have a uh, Judith Park in our control but we didn't put the thing in the depths into the victory display, so nothing happens. Yeah, so six experience, and I think that is a win in my book. So that was um, Alessandra Sorsi with a limited carpooled uh, deck in the first day scenario in the Feast of Hemlock Vale. So that is basically it. Uh, you can build an effective deck for this campaign. Uh, only using the core set cards and the cards from the Feast of Hemlock Vale Investigator expansion. But of course this was only the first scenario so it will be a tough one and uh, I just have to say that uh, this campaign is uh, really tough at the end of this campaign. So I haven't beaten this campaign yet so just a word of warning, if you are considering getting this right after the corset, I would suggest getting something else. Getting your card pull up a bit more before jumping into this campaign. Uh, it is a fun campaign, uh, but I think you need a bit more cards. But you can get started and uh, have a blast at the uh, earlier parts of the campaign with only the corset and the Hemlock Vale cards. But that being said, I hope you liked this playthrough. Thanks for watching and until next time.